Hello there. I just wanted to say that um, I'm pretty sure, and I think I've satisfied myself, that uh, these sorts of uh, mirror image comparisons, which uh, in turn um, employ uh, Proposition 8, in order to uh, identify an equal angle, are do follow from the axioms as I understand it. Um, you know, this one here um, in, a, in a, the way it's drawn inside, these do look like mirror images of each other. Uh, and so with these, if we bent them out of the page, sorry, but mainly, if I can get this, let me see if I can, what happens all the time to me, come on, hang on a sec, okay, that should do it. I don't know why, but my little pop-up doesn't always show up. Okay. I just don't want to be alt-tabbing to the thing that stops the recording from running. So now, now here we go with this one. The, the key, there's something wrong with, dare I say it, there's something wrong with Windows the operating system and explore and uh, pretty much everything else about the operating system that um, they, they, they have this great feature that you can have shortcuts you know, on the desktop right but it doesn't work ever all right now I'm in a good state I can't, I can't possibly alt tab myself off off the air uh, now, um, you see, now this, this argument doesn't appeal to anything to do with um, order of occurrence in a triangle of, the, of, of colors. That is, um, I can uh, take this triangle and I can put its baseline on either side of this line, right? And what I would have on the bottom is a mirror image of the thing on the top. This thing rotated, right? Um, red. Blue, blue or green? Blue. That's the blue, right? And then the, the baseline is white what they call the baseline. I don't know if it has any significance. I can't see that it would. Um, now the uh, what that theorem showed was that given any two any two lines that the triangle is fully determined. Right? We can work out what the next line has to be no matter what color. But if this thing um, were reproduced underneath here, where, you know, now, now the order is different. I can't copy those lines, they won't, they won't fit. Right? Well, these things don't look like very good mirror images either. It's best to draw a line here. Something like that. Anyway, the point is that uh, th this other argument used this uh, picture in order to show that the apex of a triangle with two uh, sides the same in respective order 
should have the same angle. So another triangle. Well, this one identically. Right? Um, same uh, same uh, length lines uh, and same base would share the same angle here. Oops. Yeah. No, that means pie. I want the pie. I want a piece of pie. Okay. Now, now they now they go ahead and claim. He goes ahead and claims that that also applies to this triangle. Uh, to baseline the same and a shared side um, and a shared opposite, say, or whatever, the other side implies this, ang this angle is the same as this angle. And now that's a mirror image. However, um, it is tr it's certainly true that uh, that would be the case <clears throat> but how do I translate that into this you know how do I take this result and turn it into that result uh, now what I was thinking is um, well if I turn this one on its with the, make the red the base first uh, red and then blue and then uh, white All right. um, and I have a known triangle uh, let's say not it's not like this but it's another known one that has um, red and white, uh, blue and white together, and a, a particular angle. So it would be a mirror image of this. Something like this. Uh, now the assertion is that uh, if, if I know this angle for this triangle, then that therefore that uh, angle would be the same in this triangle, and I believe that does that does follow. Uh, uh, I mean, I'm certain it follows from the axioms as they are, and we don't need an extra axiom because of this mirroring, uh, and the reason for that is I can line up the blue sides, right, or the whites, uh, but in particular the blues, which would leave, if I get rid of what we'll do it here, if I suppose I, I take this one, rotate it this way, move my hand right if it works. It's pretty good. So I'm going to take this one, rotate it that way, and uh, put blue on the bottom. And that makes it look sort of sort of flat. And then white would be red would be on the left. And um, uh, white would be here, right? Now, if I rotate this one in the same direction, just uh, but not as much, and making the blues coincide, 
same thing with this. Rotate, blues. I guess I'll make two. Let's make it close. And red would be here. And white here. Alright. Then we go back to this argument. Alright. <laughs> uh, and uh, the fact that um, there's only given these two lengths, there's only one point P, whatever, uh, that will uh, resolve into this triangle on the top, right? So there is an angle, a known angle. Who knows what color? Brown. Okay, that corresponds to this configuration. Now I want to show that this angle is the same as that angle, right? Because then what I've been able to show is uh, that lining up the white, the whites, and with these two mirror image triangles allowed me to allowed me to deduce that this angle is the same as this angle. That's what I've constructed, see? That this here angle that I'm indicating, baseline here, white here, red, well it comes from this triangle, which is this one, and that angle is white, and that's this one. Ah. Right? Blue on bottom, yeah. Okay. And I would like to be able to draw correspondence with that and be able to say that, that that's the same as that angle. That's, it. that's what's been going on. <coughs> Uh, that's what happened in the last theorem, or, or puzzle, or whatever. Okay, now I believe that that can be done by examining this diagram. It's already known, right, that there is only one position down here uh, that satisfies this triangle with these lengths, and all of these lengths are the same, right? Okay. Now, um, imagine that uh, we uh, cut this here and uh, turn this out of the page and put it flat on top of this. Yeah. So we're not actually taking a mirror image, we're just cutting it and putting it flush so that all the sides will correspond will correspond as I lay the thing on, one thing on top of the other. I can't draw it. Let's like, try. Okay, that's good enough. So what I'm trying to do is rotate about this axis and lay this second triangle on top here. And uh, we might form the hypothesis uh, the incorrect, as we already know, the impossible, the impossible hypothesis that these lines don't coincide exactly. They have to coincide exactly by that same theorem, right? And so, therefore. Uh, we know that this angle has to be the same as this one because of the fact that we can do that. Now, there's another way that we can 
if we don't, if, if you think that we're not allowed to rotate out of the page, which maybe we're not, but uh, the other idea that I had, which is quite simple and can be done with a straight edge and compass, is that we take our compass, compass. and uh, form this circle and uh, that I've used the bottom one, not the top one and um, line our straight edge along this and rotate this along around until this white one is aligned exactly with this white one and then do the same with this red rotate around until they're both, they've both been aligned Okay, on the other side, and uh, by the, that uh, the previous theorem, uh, there's only one way that fits and contains a triangle with this baseline, and so therefore the angles are equal, and so this argument is correct. You can do that same thing with it, with these two triangles. And with the next two, which is the most important one, uh, which is uh, where we finally are given instruction on how to bisect a given finite straight line. <clears throat> so that's it. Let me end here. If you believe that, if you trust that, uh, and I do, I, I, I think that's perfectly fine. It's something that can be done with the straight edge and compass and, um, and that's all we have and that's all we need. We already know how to bisect this angle which also re really relies on that um, mirror image comparison which it doesn't have to, doesn't require a mirror, it only requires a straight edge and a compass. Uh, we're given a line, and I've already written it down, um, which forms our baseline. Maybe I can draw this easier with a white, really, really flat line. Let's say, how about 175? Oh no, 1550. Like that, and another one, let's say more grayish white, like this. This is uh, what we want to do. This here, its total length is uh, 200, in fact. No, uh, 50 and 50, oh yeah, it's 200, sorry. 200 long, and we want to bisect it. Construct using problem one a uh, um, equilateral. Easy. We get out our compass and draw a circle here and uh, get out our other colored crayons and do the same thing here. Which, which gives us uh, an equilateral triangle, traditionally red. <laughs> okay. Draw red. Draw red. Uh, now, um, problem one. Oh, it's such that we are bisecting the angles. That yeah, we already know how to do that. Uh, but I'm going to, since I can't, I wouldn't be able to do that by hand. I'll have to cheat. And um, first, I can't use red because I already used red. And I'll just use these points here. Okay. Making equal angles, so these are going to be equal. 
not in my picture. Gah. Pie moon. All right. <clears throat> then uh, by problem four. Problem four. Proposition. Proposition four or pro problem? No, problem four. Problem four. Oh, here it is. No, no, no that's ten. Four. Triangles are equal and okay. That, that's the one that says the triangles are equal in every possible respect, provided that they share two sides in common and uh, a common angle. Right? Because we have two, two uh, we have a common angle and these two sides in common. Every single thing about these two triangles is, is exactly 100% identical. Well, Almost. One's a mirror image of the other. <laughs> Apparently, that doesn't matter anymore. So therefore, these two lines have to be of the same length. So we successfully bisected it. Alright. We can indicate that this way, make it slightly more like that, or change the color of this. Alright, I'm leave the circle. So there, that's, that's the procedure for bisecting. And we can go maybe get one more in. Given a point that yeah, defined by an intersection red black uh, in a straight line, red black, black red, draw a perpendicular. Okay, well, that should be quite easy by now. Our powers are growing <coughs> exponentially. And now we're on 11. This is to draw a perpendicular. The lines, a particular one, stay yeah, use this tool again. So two red and I don't have black. Uh, circle it's a bit of a hack but it works so here's our given line already Indicated that it is that that it has a well that it is the it, it is the sum of two equally equal length lines that we can easily determine. All right, uh, cut off the half. We already know how to do that. Construct uh, an equilateral and draw yellow from the, uh, the center point to the apex of the equilateral. Nothing to it.
this bit by the previous problem we've shown we can do equilateral we know how to do Um, construct yellow, and now we're going to prove that that is a perpendicular. Yellow, we will fill uh, by connecting these two points. Okay, actually, I can make a better yellow. I'm taking a really straight line. And I'm making it exactly the right height, which is going to be about 150. What is it? Uh, root, root is it root 3 over 2? I don't think so. Let's try 65. Maybe 85. Looks almost right. This here thing that I keep uh, bringing up <coughs> that I use to draw a perfectly straight line is um this this is a thing that allows me to select a bunch of pre predefined functions, right? Uh, to display. And uh, the, the function that I use the most is the function um, uh, y equals zero. <laughs> Very complex function to uh, figure out how to work. But the, the thing about this box is that I can rotate things in three positions and so on. So I think that make slanted lines or you know, horizontal it's easy. All right, now we shall prove that it is perpendicular for blue equals blue, in our case purple. Let's draw the argument out. For you know, purple. Let's see, here I am back at this thing. Really? Black. Let's push this over. Purple equals okay, that's purple equals purple, and white equals red. Right. Okay, I got that right. Those I know are equal. Okay. And yellow is common to the two triangles. Meaning, therefore, red, let's see now here's the thing again, the mirror image comparison. Therefore, uh, angle red equals angle blue. By that same argument that I've been going on trying to, to prove to myself. Um, 
I need circles, I need a pie. Colors, blue and red. There, we can this. Now, the axiom, uh, oh, it's just definition. Therefore, yellow perpendicular to that by definition, how much time? And I like that symbol. A small version of this, no. We make it small. Fill it. No, we This is true by definition. This is the definition of perpendicular. Turns out. Perpendicular is when um, the angle on both sides of a, when a line, when one line causes another line and the angle on both sides uh, is the same, then those angles are said to be right angles. Definition 10. And when one straight line finding another straight line makes the adjacent angles equal, each of these angles is called a right angle, and each of these lines is said to be perpendicular to the other. So that's true by definition. Doesn't mean we know anything about you know what a right angle is. But there is an axiom to, that gives some meaning to this right angle business, and that axiom says that all right angles are the same. And it's the only mention of uh, right angles that I've seen, um, and I don't think there's I don't think any more I need it. Um, when the, when the two, so when the two are the same, it's called a right angle. And, uh, and there's no more to be said about it than that. We've got our purple elephants, right? The meaning will come in uh, by first by this definition and the assertion by axiom that all right angles are identical. And uh, given that, I think um, the rest follows. For instance, that um, if I bend this line and add up the angles um, uh, that that it makes with you know on the acute side and the obtuse side uh, with the line then those would add up to two right angles. We don't have that yet either. In fact, I was looking ahead and that's uh, one of the next, I think that's almost the next theorem. And um, I'm not sure how much further to go with this. I think you should be getting a, pretty, a fair idea now of what it is 
of what a, 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 a rigorous proof looks like and what an axiomatic system is, uh, what it is to uh, uh, make sure that you're not assuming anything that you weren't given and so on and so forth. All the examples of all those things that come up and, and this is a very interesting story this book but it's still got quite a ways to go and I'm not going to cover the whole thing um, what I'd like to do actually probably for the next one is give you another example of an axiomatic uh, construct that's very simple called a group uh, and that's one that, that, that exists in algebra no, no um, lines or arrows or anything uh, it's just an algebraic uh, system that is based on a, a very sh a few number of axioms. The construct is called a group. There are many, many uh, different kinds of groups, and they all have interesting properties. Uh, you know, like just as you can go on with this geometry, for this is only the first six of eleven books. Uh, uh, this, the same you can do with group theory. Uh, part of the conce concepts used in group theory are used in linear algebra. Uh, in fact, linear algebra and group theory are very, are very similar in a lot of respects especially in terms of some of the axioms. So yeah, I may try I might uh, do that next unless uh, unless I see a very interesting theorem come up in here. I would like to show you um, what was it I wanted to show you um, Well, I can just show you quickly one thing. Here's this. Here's something that um, you see. Like when I'm doing all these, drawing all these things on this with this program, I'm using linear algebra in order, in order to do the computations like that tie. The, the reason I was able to fix that problem with the, you know, going the wrong way uh, w was due to, due to knowledge of uh, things to do with linear algebra. Uh, linear algebra is unlike uh, even though you do two-dimensional things in two dimensions or more. Uh, it's very much unlike trigonometry which also deals with geometric things um, in that uh, the, in linear algebra one is attempting to develop a language for speaking about geometric things but a language that is a sim sim symbol and symbolic based and doesn't uh, have to appeal to some diagram there are no diagrams, generally speaking. Uh, and one of the examples in that question set, uh, I remember giving some of my students one, and you can work, try and work this one out for yourself, um, is if you take any quadrilateral, any quadrilateral figure, okay, so that's like A, B, C, and D, point A, Anywhere, it doesn't matter how you choose them. B, I don't know, C, I don't know, D. Okay. As long as no two are no two are collinear, no two, uh, sorry, no three are collinear. Uh, now the way to read a, a quadrilateral is you go in um, letter wise, okay? And hopefully it forms an enclosed shape. If it doesn't, it's not 
Crawford quite reliably. And I'll just use the, I can use a hollow, a hollow parallelogram, how about that? And, uh, and a green. D. Okay, that's a quadrilateral. It has four sides. You bisect those four sides. Okay, uh, that is find the midpoints for the, each side. Let me pretend I'm lo I've located them. Here. Here. And about there. Okay. Now I'm going to draw another uh, uh, another polygon. Why not red? Uh, with these points. Notice something about this compared with this. <laughs> The theorem states that um, the red uh, quadrilateral is always is and will always be a parallelogram. So there's a little puzzle for you to think about. In linear algebra, uh, for, which is the reason why I need to use linear algebra to do, do this sort of stuff, in line, using linear algebra to prove that, that fact is a, about, uh, you know, you can do it almost by inspection. To do it with um, cosines and sines and geometry and uh, you know uh, coordinate axes x and y, try and do it that way, and, and that's a difficult problem. So there's one advantage to knowing about <coughs> linear algebra is is um, Having a language within which you can talk about these things in a in a clear, unambiguous way, <clears throat> and which doesn't have you bogged down, uh, you know, comparing triangles and stuff. Okay, till then.